Welcome to Course 158. This is my course on integration services for SQL Server 2008 and SQL Server 2008 R2. My name is Scott Wiggum. That's my shiny happy face that you see there <laughs> over on the right hand side. Uh, this is a course brought to you by LearnItFirst.com and it's a pretty big course. So what I thought we would do is let's have one video that sort of outlines here's the whole course. Here's what we're going to cover. Here's the skill levels. Here's what you should expect out of the course and then we'll kind of jump in a little bit deeper as we develop through the course here. So this is a comprehensive course. When I designed this I tried to make it cover pretty much all of the aspects of integration services. We're going to talk about ETL, security, package management, uh, scheduling your packages, a, a overview of all the different tasks. So it's, it's pretty comprehensive. Because it is so comprehensive, it's huge, right? This is about 42 hours. Okay, I break these down into little chunks, and you can see here that it's an average of about 12 minutes of video. My logic for this when I design a course is I try to take a topic and distill it down to where we can cover that topic in one or two videos. That way it, it serves two purposes. One, you can treat this just like you would a regular class. Okay, So you could sit down and you can watch 42 hours over a three or four or five day period. It's equivalent to about five days of a uh, actual classroom uh, class. But then two, once you've finished it, or you don't even have to do the whole thing, but because it's in chunks and because it's online and you can index it and search it, if you later on want to review just one specific section, you can. You know, this is the advantage of, go, of doing this in video rather than doing an online class uh, or rather than doing a live class. You know, if you're doing a live presentation and you later need to review that content, forget it. If you didn't take good notes, you can't go back and do it. But with this, because it's searchable, because it's broken down into small little chunks, real easy for you to go back to it uh, and find that. Um, I also have a lot of times where we'll be following along. So you'll be doing sort of uh, in-class exercises with me. You have FTP files that you'll be downloading uh, as part of the FTP task, for example. Uh, the when you start working with this, we'll be working with what are called DTSX files. These are the actual files that your packages can be saved as. So those are included in your videos. We'll have PDFs, script files, coding files. All of those come with the videos there. We'll cover best practices, performance tips, uh, management tips, little tips and tricks throughout uh, as well. So it's a huge course. Really is comprehensive, meant to take you from A to Z with integration services. Uh, to break it down, we have nine chapters in this course. Uh, the coverage of this is at a beginner to intermediate level. We'll spike to advanced at certain parts during the course, but by and large, this is beginner to intermediate. I break it down into skill levels, and I think of it like this. So 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, right? So this, about right in here, is where we're going to be covering it 100 to 300 okay so 100 would be your novice 500 would be the guru level now we'll spike up into here and here but by and large the course is that the beginner to the intermediate level okay yeah, I think this is a great course for somebody coming from DTS to SQL Server 2008 or somebody in SQL 2005 who has worked with a little bit of integration services moving to 2008. Uh, it's also perfect because it's at the beginner to intermediate for somebody brand new. Right? Now settle in. Let me, let me just say, this is going to be a rather long video because I'm trying to give you an overview of what we're going to cover. A lot of people will use this video to decide whether this course is right for them. And as such, there's a lot of little bitty pieces that I want to touch on to make sure you understand whether or not this course is worth your time. It's 42 hours, right? Nine chapters. That's a lot of content. That's a lot of stuff to, to consider. So I want to make sure that you have you know, the necessary info that you need. A couple of things about prerequisites. It's best to have a, at least a working knowledge of SQL. Notice I didn't say a working knowledge of SQL Server. You don't have to have a working knowledge of SQL Server to do this course. It would be helpful. It would make initial pieces easier. 
you'd already know the tools, you know, you'd be familiar with the terminology, but it's not required. Integration services may ship with SQL Server, but I know plenty of people in the Oracle space who like this product because it's super easy for them to use as well. Okay? You don't need to be an expert. You don't need to have 10 years of DBA experience. Now, I'm assuming that you're here to learn about ETL and how to use SSIS within the ETL process. So you're not expected to know all of that already. You might not even know what ETL is, and that's, <laughs> that's totally cool. We're going to cover what all that comes in uh, you know, a little bit later, chapters 2 and forward. And I'll cover a couple of questions here. What if you're not a SQL person? What if you are a C-sharp, Visual Basic, Java, whatever developer, and you've been tasked with coming into integration services? Okay, even though it's a course that isn't entirely for beginners, you'll still be able to follow along. Right? It's a beginner to intermediate. You still need to have a working knowledge of SQL, but I think you probably would be able to follow along if you didn't have that. Some of the parts we're going to go through are heavy on coding. We'll be using Transact SQL, C Sharp, Visual Basic throughout the course. Okay? Some of the times we won't be using any coding. We'll be talking concepts, we'll be using GUIs. Okay? Now, you don't have to be a language specific guru to take the course. You don't have to know everything about C Sharp or SQL. Here's the thing. You'll be given the files so that you don't really have to do typing if you don't want to. Your goal at that point would be learning the concepts, how things work. Maybe you're a project manager and you have to oversee a C Sharp development team working with integration services. Cool. Watch and learn. Now what about if you're a DBA is this a course for you? Well, sure, a lot of DBAs go through this. You need probably to have at least a solid working knowledge of integration services to even be considered a modern-day DBA in SQL Server 2008. However, you could be a guru DBA, DBA, but that doesn't mean you're a guru at SSIS. It's a different discipline. Your knowledge in DBA is absolutely going to make things easier if you port that over to SSIS. But it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. Okay, Just because you're a, a guru SQL developer does not make you a guru at SSIS. There's way more to SSIS than just SQL Server development. So it'll help you, but here's what I would suggest. Look over the course outlines. I'll show you where those are here in just a second. And just see if what we're going to cover fits what you need to have covered. Okay. That's what I would suggest uh, to anybody. A couple of related courses here. We're kind of running long, so I'll, I'll be quick on this one. Course 157 is for DBAs, so it's kind of the same thing, 45-hour course. I, I think all of these are going to be 30 hours plus. They're basically replacements for taking a live class with a live instructor. Course 160 is the query writing class. Uh, that's used a lot in the ETL process. 161, that's all about stored procedures, triggers, uh, indexes, database design. Course 162, reporting services. And 165 is analysis services. Okay, so, you know, each of these takes up about 30 hours, 40 hours. One of them, I think, is even 50 something hours. That's like eight days of class time, or something like that. So it's a lot of stuff to cover. Now there is, with this video, a PDF file of this presentation. So anytime you see me in a class going through a presentation like this, there will be a PDF attached with it. This is sort of what I call lecture mode. We're going to have lectures, we'll have exercises, and we'll have demonstrations, which is not like this. Demonstrations is me with a computer and moving the mouse around and clicking buttons and saying, okay, click here. Right? You can kind of follow along. But the PDF that is with this video has the chapter listings and a breakdown. And you can skim that and say, hey, there's what I need. I need chapter 6. And kind of figure out what you need. Uh, now let's just talk about here one kind of final thing we'll get into before we're, we're done and on to the next video. What does it mean when we say SQL 2008 Integration Services? This is somewhat a little tricky because there's actually two different yet similar ways to say it. We could say SQL Server 2008 
integration services? Well, we might say SQL 2008 R2, okay? And it's that R2 that's going to trick a couple of people. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. And I know some of you guys are still on SQL 2005 and you're considering taking this particular course. And it's totally cool to do that. There's going to be a significant amount of overlap between 2005 and 2008. Um, I, it's not going to be 100% overlap. I'd guess it's around 80 to 90%. Uh, where we will use C Sharp in 2008, you ha would have to use Visual Basic in 2005, for example. Um, there's going to be some new tasks in 2008, a few changes here and there. Uh, but by and large, you will be safe taking this course uh, and porting your knowledge to SQL 2005. We'll talk actually about that a little bit later. But this is, notice this little slash here. It's an R2 a 2008 slash R2 course. That means we're covering both of these guys, SQL Server 2008 and SQL Server 2008 R2. Okay. Now, what that means, SQL Server 2008 is a product, okay? This it was released in 2008. It's a full-blown SQL Server product. What our product name is, is SQL Server 2008 Integration Services. And we just abbreviate that SSIS. You see that guy right there. Now, the tool that we develop in is called BIDS, Business Intelligence Development Studio. It's a goofy name. I'll complain about it later. But it's called BIDS, and it's really part of the Visual Studio 2008 suite. So when you install SQL Server 2008 Integration Services, <laughs> it installs Visual Studio 2008 with the Business Intelligence Development Studio. Hey, bits. <laughs> All right, sorry. <laughs> now, SQL Server 2008 R2 is a separate product. SQL Server 2008 R2 is a separate product unto itself. Okay. You know, used to, it's been SQL Server 7.0, then we went to SQL Server 2000, then SQL Server 2005, then SQL Server 2008. SQL Server 2008 R2 is the next release, okay? It's one that you have to pay for, okay? So our product is SQL Server 2008 Integration Services. And it's still abbreviated SSIS, although I'm probably going to say SSIS 2008 R2. It's a confusing way that they did the R2 stands for release to. However, the development tool, this is a key piece, okay? Pay attention, this is a key piece, okay? The development tool, bids, is still the same. There's no difference. Bids is the same, whether you're using SQL Server 2008 or SQL Server 2008 R2. Aha, uh -huh, okay, so, What's new in SQL Server 2008 R2? There's a lot of new features. However, our little product right here, Integration Services, doesn't change. That's right. There are no new features in R2. So if you trained on SQL Server 2008 Integration Services, you don't need to be retrained on R2. You don't need to read a new article. You don't need to go to class. You don't need a refresher course. It's the same. There's no difference. It's the same tool, the same task. Nothing has changed. Okay? So there aren't separate courses for SQL Server 2008 integration services and SQL Server 2008 R2 integration services because there's no need. The overlap is the same. Okay? Now, we, we've run really, really long, and I apologize. Just wanted to get all this info to you here. Here's a uh, look at the chapters. I, I tried to make it pretty logical. Let's talk about, you know, getting it installed. Let's then create our first packages. Let's talk about what happens when you go to file save. Uh, and then let's spend way too long <laughs> on chapter four. This is the big chapter. If we had a histogram that showed how much time we spend, we're going to spend the bulk of the time in Chapter 4. It's a walkthrough of almost every single SSIS task. Okay? And we'll walk you through real-world real problems, downloading FTP files, um, doing upserts, all kinds of things. Get to play with that. 
we do we also go into more real world projects doing .NET with SSIS execution and scheduling and even migrating from the old SQL Server 2000 okay so I tell you what we're going to do in the next video I'm going to get you started on a section of an overview for newbies and beginners however at the end of this okay if you get the PDF page is 19 notice right here that I'm on page 18 right now so page 19 through like 28 is a breakdown of what's in every single chapter so you can see me scroll through it see so here's chapter one here's chapter two here's chapter three here's what they all are go get the PDF and scroll through those and it'll give you a really good idea of the breakdown of every chapter